Sim Captains, and welcome to this first Flight Brothers podcast for the week of April 19th, 2020. I'm Tim. And of course, I'm Lee, and we're trying out this little harebrained experiment just to kind of bring you guys up to speed on what we've been up to, maybe what's in the works, and what's happening in the industry. Right, and uh, I think at the end of the day, we miss you guys. Uh, if you were around when we were doing some live streams, we ran into some uh, some issues with getting it piped out at a speed that you could actually handle watching. And so we had to stop doing that, but we really miss the interaction. So we were hoping if we pop this out, maybe uh, it'll jog your memory. You can throw in some comments at the bottom of this video, and we'll we'll get back to you or include it in our next topic. Or it could be just a complete and utter flop, and this may be the only one that exists on the internet, as long as the internet's around. It would not be the first time we've had a great idea that we thought was amazing, and no one else did. So, whatever, throw well, this at the wall. Yeah. I'm sure the annals of history are full of ideas that didn't really take. So, Lee, let's get them started with the, where has the Flight Brothers been for a month? Because we were popping out videos every single week, and now it's been about 30 days, and we haven't put one out. So, you want to tell people what we've been up to? Yeah, well, we've got, uh, well, actually, this coming Wednesday, which is, I don't know, somewhere around the uh, 29th, I think, 30th. Um, uh, check, yeah, it'll 29th. be four weeks since, yeah, since we actually released a video. Um We've been busy both uh, with uh, some work. If you guys are unaware, we're doing some video production with uh, FSElite.net. They uh, brought us on board, so we're working with them, kind of learning the team over there. And uh, on top of that, just kind of some life. Of course, we wish all of you and your loved ones the best during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It's, it's taken a lot of uh, sacrifices by... Many people shifted schedules, how they work, how they do work. So we hope uh, all of you guys are doing well at this time. But also, it's just kind of adjusted with with us having to do our work, how we do our videos. Yeah, let's, let's tell them how this is happening. See, normally, uh, Lee would be over here hanging out in my uh, office slash sim room. And the, the kids and the wives would be out in the rest of the house trying not to make too much noise. But uh, ever since uh, COVID-19 and social distancing, we are about, uh, I don't know, 20 miles apart from each other right now uh, using Discord. Rather effectively, actually, our first video for FS Elite was uh, recorded entirely over Discord, and you should check it out. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, Dornier 328 video. Yeah, and that was a new thing for us to uh, to try, I think, on a Saturday morning with some coffee. And and I actually think that video is a little bit of the inspiration for doing this, because uh, as we've done these, and correct us in the comments if you think this is wrong, but I think what we've discovered is people find our channel unique because there's two of us, and that sounds like, duh, but... Uh, I, a somewhat obvious observation. Right. Statement. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but I think what people like is the, the back and forth, uh, particularly since our backgrounds are so different. Uh, mm -hmm. Both uh, you and I come at it from completely different angles, and that gives us a lot of room to talk. And I can talk forever. I don't know if people have picked that up yet or not. I know I have. <laughs> so, um, so Lee and I have made a little list here of just things that are going on. And I thought it would be kind of cool if we talked about the upcoming videos because it might seem like we disappeared, but we're actually in the midst of about uh, four pretty big four? projects. Wow. No, yeah. we actually have a fifth. I didn't even – I got to put the fifth one on here. So do you want to tell them about uh, your upcoming one for our channel? Yeah, so the one uh, – it was intended to kind of piggyback on the flight sim for beginners things but i think it's really just a more detailed look at the i think x-plane actually calls it the s tech like 55x autopilot so that would be the one that's in the steam gauge default cessna so there's a lot of features that actually are in that that are modeled in x-plane that maybe people are unaware of so I figured I would do that. We may go into some G1000 stuff down the road. We'll see how well this is received. But I actually found a manual, did some reading and research, and 
I thought, well, this might be something interesting to kind of go along with a flight sim beginners because no one really wants to sit there and hand fly it in the world of flight sim. We don't have to pay for autopilots, right? You know, the right. thousands of dollars in servos and all the maintenance required for it. So, you know, um, what's interesting, sorry, did I, was there more to that thought? No, not really. All right. Uh, I, I was just thinking about the people that have been watching these videos and the comments we've gotten. Y you mentioned this is in the steam gauge default Cessna 172. Um, and I think it shows up. Is that the only thing it's in? No, it is. I wish I had my notes immediately in front of me for that. I think the, uh, does the Pilatus, your PC-12 may have it, the Carinado. It's in about three or four different airplanes. Um, I just know when I've looked was, at it, it's pretty familiar. Yeah, and the Piper, the, um, the V-Flight Air Cherokee that I have, it's in that. I have actually I have video footage that I recorded I think in two or three different aircraft that it's in just to model that the it functions the same. So I think this is what's going to be cool about this. Um, if if you're in a, our audience and you're almost exclusively a um, FMC based sim airline pilot, you should really check this out because it's pretty cool. Now if you come in. Uh, from the world of general aviation and you have a private pilot's license, odds are you know how this thing works because these are pretty ubiquitous out there. But if you're coming in from the sim world, pretty much just doing airliners and heavy metal, the whole slant alpha doing radio nav, VORs, it, it looks really intimidating. But uh, I would say it's very satisfying. Once you start to figure it out, it's actually not really that complicated, and uh, knowing how to use this autopilot is going to be pretty critical to you having enough brain power left over to make your mental maps and mess with the radios. Uh, you're going to have trouble with that if you haven't trimmed it out and you're still maintaining altitude and course. <laughs> well, and that's an advantage of any autopilot is just to free the pilot's mind up to do other things you know it's so easy especially in a real ifr environment to get task saturated so if you can learn this and we don't know what we don't know how everyone uses flight sim i mean dcs is out there back in the day there was that microsoft combat flight sim james from you know their series of of different aircraft from back in the day so we don't know how people use these we're x-plane centric but that doesn't mean we have to only be x-plane um but since we don't know how you guys consume it then you know maybe maybe it's a miss you yeah. know maybe it's a hit so we we don't know until we make the video and put it out there but yeah particularly if you're not familiar with it i think that'd be a good thing to check out because you might discover for example there's an 80 percent functional auto land in uh the yeah system. it'll it'll yeah, it'll bring you down to about uh, probably around 100 to 150 feet. Mind blown, It brings you right? down pretty low. You you would yeah. never have guessed that it could do that. That was one of the things you told me that I remembered because I didn't know it would do it. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, um, so, so, since I'm clock watching, I don't know how long we want to hover on that and started it late. Do we want to move to what you're working yeah, on? Yeah, let's, let's keep it rolling. So I've got... For, for FBFT. Uh, I've got a thing completely filmed it took me um the first month of COVID-19 quarantining to uh to get it all flown and that's because I've been doing some planning but I'm running the North Atlantic ferry route and this is super historical and really cool so um to get yourself from the continental U.S. to Europe generally speaking you're going to leave the east coast of the U.S. and head towards England uh, you know, the typical, uh, is it Mercator projection map is, is a piece of garbage and not really useful for navigational reasons. So uh, most of you as sim captains probably know you take a, a much, much more northern routing is actually the straight line. And that straight line takes you up over Greenland, Iceland, down into Scotland. So uh, Unless you're a flat earther, then everything you just said is a complete lie. Right, right. Then... Um, 
let's pretend that's not the case. Right. Then you could just do everything ballistically to get <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, the reason this, this really struck my fancy is, um, I had just stumbled across some of these airports and, and why they got built up there. And that led me, I get on these Wikipedia bunny trails where I click one link and then another link. And then I'm, I'm 65 topics from where I started and I'm just completely entertained. So, uh, in order to get aircraft over without putting them on ships that were, you know, there's a chance a U boat's going to take them out. They started getting civilian pilots, training them on enough navigation and having them, bring military aircraft over on this route uh it's about five stops long and if you didn't the wasps actually do that the wasps also yeah the women's possibly i i haven't run across that yet but it's it's possible i do not know okay sorry no, that's fine uh that would be Shout something out to worth the checking early women aviators yeah so um you know it, it's no big deal today to take a modern airliner and fly it from uh, the U S East coast out to Europe. It can be done very, very simply. The navigational pieces, very simple. The weather at cruising altitude, not usually a big deal, but if you take an unpressurized piston aircraft, now all of a sudden you're stuck in the weather. Um, You don't have FMCs. You don't have GPS you could be hundreds of miles out to sea and mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of magnetic deviation up there. I had to do a lot of reading on that because uh, sure. the compass itself is highly suspect in these Northern latitudes. So it's just a really, uh, you know, if you try and simulate it the way it would have actually been done, it becomes kind of a small Mount Everest type expedition. So th- we'll keep an eye out mm-hmm. for that video. Should be pretty cool. It's like, it's like a glacier. You only see the top part of it. Yep. I'm going to give all the planning details so you can recreate it yourself. And I'll even tell you if you want to be lazy um, or do it just the easy way, how to use the GPS for it. So we'll do it both ways so you can pick your poison. All right. So do you want to uh, you want to mention anything about our upcoming FS Elite stuff? I mean, we don't want to let too much cat um, out of the bag, but we are allowed to kind of yeah throw topics. Yeah, that's true. So for uh, for FS Elite, if you guys are unaware of our work over there, go check it out. Um, our second video that'll be produced for them is going to be on the newly released Just Flight Falcon uh, for X Plane Eleven. Yes. Of course, they already have it out for FSX and I believe all of the P three Ds to possibly even include V five um, if it's out or when it comes out, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so we were able to get our hands on that through some connections with the FS Elite guys, and we'd like to say thanks, of course, to FS Elite and Just Flight for supplying us with that, and we're really looking forward to that review. I have done a uh, first look. I'm not sure how we're doing it yet because uh, Jordan's going to be doing a ride up there. But, uh, yeah, I've gotten about two really good cross-country flights with it and a couple more local flights, uh, and you've flown it a little bit as well, Tim. Well, I've flown the free one. And then this, and you had seen the free one over here on my sim, and I was super excited about that free one, and I don't think you were very excited. So now that you have your hands on a payware level one, and uh, I, I, I don't want to say too much, guys, but I will tell you, if you like Vulcans at all, once you see this thing, you're going to want it. <laughs> yeah, or even historic military planes. Um, it's It's very well done, so... Let's let, let's not give them too much, but uh, it's a it's gonna be good. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nice addition to the hangar. So uh, keep, I guess the the next keep an eye on FS Elite. The next topic for our uh, video uh, we're gonna mess with for FS Elite. And by the way, we should mention if you didn't know this, that's an all volunteer crew over there. We are volunteers for them as well. I mean, it's we don't mind doing it because it's the sort of videos we would do for you anyway we just uh try and do them a little cleaner and nicer because we're we're, (laughs) we try and act more professional right well you know they have a very good product you could go through their page and think this was like a paid thing because it doesn't look amateurish everything there is very polished they do a really nice job with it so um we are also volunteers for them and um 
Well, and they're all passionate about it too. You know, they really do work hard. I mean, we, we've been with them now, kind of behind the scenes, Tim, for what about three months, three or four months since about the beginning of the year. And I think that's part of what's so impressive. It's just great to be part of the conversation, even though mm-hmm. we're just video producers and putting out maybe a thing every month or so for them. But uh, they're working around the clock and around the world. Um, that's true. Yeah. It's uh, it's fascinating how much uh, energy they're putting into it. So you know, tip of the hat to uh, FS Elite. So yeah, so go uh, go check out their page and uh, give them a subscribe to on their YouTube channel. Our our next project. I'm not even going to tell you exactly what it is. So don't 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 give them the specifics. But okay. the, the next project after that for FS Elite is going to be the answer to this question: Can you save the Laminar Default 747? For twelve dollars, for twelve bucks, can you make that thing like worth flying? So we'll be answering that question to you with a little uh, twelve dollar tweak, and uh, we'll, we'll see what you think of it. That'll be—I don't know how long it's going to take for that one to come out, but but keep an eye on that. That should be pretty cool. Because uh, personally, I really always liked that default seven four four, but it has. Uh, it has some serious limitations, and I, and I think at least, in my mind, it had two big limitations. I think for 12 bucks you can take one of them completely off the table, so we'll get to that. Well, and I, I don't think I had actually done a flight with it until uh, you shared that aircraft with me through uh, Project Fly, and then, of course, you conveniently left it in Hong Kong and decided to base it in detroit so i'm like a little kid four- i leave my planes all around the world <laughs> it's like socks about four uh, about 14 to 15 hours later i had flown it back so uh, <laughs> lee walks in who left this plane here yeah yeah it's out of place that drives me out hey, let's, let's talk about project fly because you and i have just recently gotten into the uh shared uh shared logbook sort of function of it and that wasn't something i think you discovered it first um, yeah, just accidentally by clicking around. So yeah, if you've got buddies, right, you can uh, just share a picture or share the, the, share the it with profile. another user. Right. Um, yeah, you go into fleet, then, right? You click up the aircraft's uh, profile, and that's where the share button mm-hmm. is, correct? Yeah, I believe that's correct, yeah. And so, uh, I don't know, one of the cooler things that we got to do was uh, Lee had a fictional Cafe Pacific... Uh, SSG 747-800. V2. Uh, yeah, the new one. And he was going to deliver it from Boeing out to um, Hong Kong, where Cathay would be based. And you had moved it as far as, what, Japan? Yeah, I flew it from Payne Field to Anchorage one day, and then I flew it down to, I think, Narita on a uh, subsequent day, like a day or two later. That's right. Okay, for those of you who follow, follow us on social media, was uh, probably Instagram and Facebook, and we'll, we'll put it down in the description because I can never remember our screen names. But um, <laughs> Lee... One of them is Flight FT 2019. That might be Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 in the channel info. You guys know how to find that. So down uh, uh, when Lee first shared this with me, he's like, oh, well, there's the final destination trying to get to Hong Kong. And um, I was like, well, it just happened to be a day when I had time. So I fired it up and took off from um, Narita and... What's the other one in the town? Haneda in Tokyo? Yeah. Yeah, Haneda. So I took off from Narita. I hope I have these correct in my head. And I really wanted to get some some shots with the scenery pack I have. I think it's a free Mr. X6. And I I accidentally had the best time hand flying because I just took off, I throttled back, got her all trimmed out, and was flying at about 2,000 feet, and it was just so stable. It it was just as pleasant as flying a Cessna, except for a lot more expensive. And I flew Mm -hmm. more more than a few minutes to get over to uh, Haneda and downtown Tokyo and do some some banking curves around uh, Tokyo Tower and and then pass Mount Fuji as I climbed out for the actual trip. So I have pictures of that that are over 
actually, I think I made a little video clip too. Uh, those are on our social media, so you should check them out because those were good fun. Yeah, it was pretty good. Turned out uh, very well. I think you got a couple comments on Instagram too about it. Hey, um, to uh, nail your uh, Project Fly thing there, if you go to the Stratus and then Fleet, and then as you pull up your aircraft, view aircraft, and then that's where your share with friends option is. So Stratus, and you just type Fleet. Yeah. View aircraft. Stratus Fleet. Yep, and then that would be your aircraft list. Okay. And then view aircraft, and then you select the share with friends, and then you can type in any of your friends, and any flying they do will uh, put time on that airframe. Right, so it doesn't change your logbook. So, for example, uh, Lee and I have been sharing that 748. On my flight map, when you first log into Project Fly, I only see the legs I did. But if I go mm -hmm. into the uh, fleet folder and I find the aircraft and I click it up, the aircraft's map of all of the trips it done will include both Lee's flights on it as well as mine. So and the flight time. Oh, oh right, and yeah, the accumulated flight time and all that. So it's, it's been a, correct. It's been great, actually. I uh, I have kind of tagged your it <laughs> with this. I think I uh, what was it? The Buffalo. Uh, DC-3. Yeah, the DC-3 or C-47. So I found uh, a virtual airline. I think it's just Buffalo Airways. I'll look it up here. Uh, Buffalo Airways Virtual. And they have schedules based on... Um, what's that called? Ice Pilots uh, NWT? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah. But Northwest Territories or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, the Discovery Show or something, isn't it? Yeah, I... Been spending a little time watching TV lately. No surprise there. And right. uh, they have taken the flights from the various episodes and put them in here as uh, a schedule, basically. So you can go through and fly the episodes. And so I started a trip out, and then I sort of tagged your it to Lee. And he did it the next uh, hop, and then I got it the rest of the way. And then because I'm a child, I abandoned the plane in Juno. <laughs> so right, which is great because I had flown that plane once around the pattern, and I knew from his video on our uh, YouTube channel that it had a quirky autopilot compass situation. Mm. You know, so uh, about the first ten minutes of the flight, fifteen minutes were me figuring out how to set that up. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is a little weird. I mean, once you get the hang of it, it's it's fine. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, that's just something unique with these older aircraft. Pretty much all the newer stuff, GA or heavy metal, you know, those weird compasses that you well, have to calibrate, those are pretty much going away. It, yeah, and there's quirks with all of them. I mean, look no further than, for example, in our hangar, you know, Airbus, Boeing, and um, the ERJ, you know, the X-Crafts ERJ. Right. Like, those you know are systemically or what yeah i guess systemically the systems in them are different so here you go hey anyway hey i want to kick the uh, ball a little further down there if we if we can tim we're trying to keep this at around 30 minutes Yeah, well, where are we, we on the know. clock right now just yeah we're i started a little late but we're at 21 minutes now well can, i actually had a, a jump to the next topic anyway based off what okay. we were just talking about just uh Perfect. aircraft logic so I wanted to talk about the new planes we picked up uh, since you guys last saw our, our videos. And I picked up, uh, while it was on sale, the Fly J Sim 737-200, the classic, mm -hmm. or the Jurassic, as we occasionally call it. Right. And um, in a weird moment, because usually I actually pull out the manuals and geek out, I figured, you know... I flew Zebo for like a year exclusively, a couple hundred hours. Let's just see what I can do. Uh, and based off of, you know, my knowledge of the 707 and the Fly J727, I just jumped in and said, let's see what we got. Sure enough, started it up, did my entire first flight uh, by hand with no uh, use of the autopilot. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So... A very enjoyable aircraft, a great hand flyer. I got to be honest, the reason I didn't turn on the AP was uh, it was just so stable and fun. I was like, you know, I don't really need it. And the winds weren't bashing me around, so that made it more doable, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I picked up that uh, the 
Thranda Quest Kodiak. Yeah. Liked that. And I went ahead and got the, the rep for it because there is a, a reality expansion pack. So that's been fun. Uh, flies like a big Cessna, big powerful Cessna. And uh, due to, well, y you're aware, Tim, we had some of the early release uh, Concords, but I did go ahead and spring and, and purchased the, the Concord as well because I had an update issue and uh, I couldn't get past a certain update. So oh, rather okay. than... Rather than fire off emails and go through all that, um, the amount of work that uh, you know the Coley Matta team have done on that made it well worth Thank it. Thank you, so. sir, for your donation. Now we've both bought one. <laughs> that's that's I had, it. Uh, yeah, I had bought mine before we connected with uh, with him back back then. Uh, if we never mentioned it in one of our videos, that's Florian and Steve, right? Or if you gentlemen just didn't catch that tidbit, uh, a lot of times after a review will make contact with the developers because um, particularly if the video is very popular and makes some kind of waves out there. And, and it's always been positive con uh, contact. I, I think if you've watched any of our videos, you know, we're, we're not hyper hypercritical. Like if something's broken, we're going to tell you this does not work. But we're not people who really come out and just say, well, I don't like how they did this, blah, blah, blah. We don't really uh, get in the business of trashing things. So uh, sure, I, I think sure, yeah. developers kind of appreciate that. You know, we're there to point out what's good and what might not work, not necessarily nitpicking details. Right, and we also don't want to go say, this didn't work, and make a video about that that everyone sees. Right, and then it turns out that we screwed something oh up. Oh my goodness, that's you know, <laughs> that's our credibility, and you know, so it's really difficult. We want to walk the line between, you know, giving a good look at some aircraft, and well, we're we're constantly know, messing with that same. I mean, even the, the video projects we have now, there's uh, sure. there's features that Lee and I are both playing with, and. Uh, you know, to try and duplicate or verify. Right. And then if we're not sure, we'll email the developer because, uh, you know, there's no sense. There's enough people out there who will just jump to the, oh, this doesn't work, blah, that I don't want to be another one of those people. So if it doesn't work, I want to really be sure that it wasn't just me being an idiot because I frequently am. So... Uh, we, I tried a couple times, I have Lee tried a few times, then we'll fire off an email and see if we can get an answer. Like, is it just us or is there something a little quirky here? So, uh, yeah, true. It's always well, and I, that way. Well, and also, you know, they're, they're putting a software program out there that works for, you know, uh, Mac or sometimes Linux or windows on every PC there is, you know, so go try and get a Honda key and stick it in your, your Dodge, your Fiat, your you know, Chevy and see if the same key works. You know, it's amazing that the software guys right. do what they do and something will be missed. Well, I mean, it's just, there's too many variables. Now there's an interesting topic because the forums, uh, we hang out a lot on X plane forum on uh, Facebook and, uh, everything X plane on Facebook and X plane addict. X -plane addict. And yeah. there's one thread that always comes up. Here's my PC insert spec sheet. Will it fly X plane? Or I hate my frame rates. Here's my specs. What's wrong? Uh, you know, the way the software works, it can really bottleneck any number of places. But like mine, when mm -hmm. we run into issues, it's usually a CPU bottleneck. Uh, some people have RAM issues. Some people have uh, GPU Video issues. Video card. Yeah. Uh, vid ram issues so could be an internet issue too so you take all of that and then just to throw it out there and say oh this plane has bad frame rates or oh x planes terrible nah you know it's a very complex thing there's a very high performance bit of software but uh but who knows i i'm actually very curious to see what the vulcan update when it's uh officially released i'm not i'm not about to throw myself under the bus and beta test the uh vulcan release right. well i think you and i have uh i wouldn't mind beta testing aircraft i'm not gonna beta test my flight sim 
Uh, you know, and for us doing what we do with the recording and all that stuff, you know, if we have a software hang up, we're down. Right. Yeah. That's so fun. that's not a risk I want to take. But hey, we're, we're closing in here. We're, we're at about 27 minutes plus a little on the front end. Do we want to hit kind of like the uh, the releases this week? Maybe a couple of the big things that we've seen with uh, obviously we've mentioned the Vulcan. Yeah. So, um, well, if they really want to be informed, they should look at fselite.net but what have you seen out there because there's uh i know we were talking about um uh john fly yeah yeah john fly i guess had a early early release version if i understand it i haven't watched the video yet um on the torque sim islander uh which is a twin turbo prop kind of almost island hopping commuter uh, hey i got i'm sure I gotta throw this out there i was watching a thing on one of those islanders Mm -hmm. It might have been in Flying Magazine. I, I'm, I'm, try, I'm not sure if this was an internet article or in Paper Flying Magazine. There's too many that confused my head. Uh, but uh -huh. it was a, a Britain Norman Islander that was being either built or refurbished. And to get it to its customer, it was going to have to North Atlantic Ferry Route. Sh oh, interesting. Bam. Yeah, so uh, there's another, you know, it's not just World War II planes. If you want to get your little tiny GA and sell it to someone in Europe or buy one from Europe to the U S that's how it's going to get here. At any rate. Um, I, I believe uh, what's the guy that uh, he's got the YouTube channel. Uh, we've watched some of his videos. I think he, he has the bonanza. He's flown it around the world, but I think he did a uh, Matt Atlantic. Gunth Miller, Guth Gunth Miller, Guth, Guth Miller. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know we're destroying your name, sir. Love all yeah, of your sorry. videos. No. I'm very sorry. I cannot say your name. Partially because right, have we, you ever uh, heard anyone say his name in the videos? I don't know that I've... Um, no, I haven't. I know he's got some, some does some good work, and I uh, do subscribe and watch the channel. So. And he did the ferry route in a DC-3, that Pan Am one that's for the right. D-Day. That's right. That's such a good yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's a good, good seat. Good seat to have. Um, the SSG 747-8 uh, V2 freighter yes. um, SSG released some uh, photos of it of the uh, nose being articulated and a little bit of the internal modeling um, I think of course it's I'm looking forward to that hey can I've got a couple can I ask, flights in on the uh, V2 so can I ask you a question about that aircraft yeah. so I, I've noticed with a couple of these larger aircraft especially uh, SSG's 748 Okay. When you zoom in from an external view, not with the scroll wheel, but with the uh, period on the keyboard. Okay. Have you noticed the closest it will get is still pretty far out? I haven't noticed that. It's just an interesting point because I've noticed something here that a lot of, you know, when you're at the airport, you're at a, a terminal and there's a seven... 47 uh, it's usually a 744 there's just not that many 748s out there but either way you know the nose is the same it's imposing it's massive it's a building with wings and so in the sim when your uh external shot is a football field away you know it doesn't it doesn't quite lo it loses something so i've noticed if you uh if you move your viewpoint to the ground and you really move into it like a human being would stand, the textures uh -huh. on it are, uh, I don't think people really appreciate how high quality the textures are and that's a good airplane. Just how much texture there is. I mean, you know, it's like, it's like a, a piece of clothing for a child versus a, a piece of clothing for a full grown adult. The amount of texture on that bird is huge. Right. Well, and having owned the V1, having owned the V2, and then, of course, made a video uh, on our on Flight Brothers. I think where I'm flying the V1, and then right. we made... Uh, I did that quick burn first look, which I kind of... I somewhat regretted. I tried to get it out there and push it, you know, in, it, in full disclosure. You know, I wanted a video out there quick. Um, I did that. I'm not sure that I did the do diligence on researching it because i quite frankly it came out i recorded it before work and you know it was done in like four hours you know which the, the only shame i think is that 
when you look at the view stats, most people only watch the first one. Right. Our our follow up one was a lot better, and I think that was neat because you hadn't flown either of them uh, to that point, and it was good to get a fresh set of eyes on it because you had nothing to compare it to at that time. Right. Other than the default. And then we did. Uh, was it a, a live flight? stream? Oh, it was a live stream. That's right. Yeah, we did a live stream. I think it was live stream two or three. And so I, I think the only shame is that people didn't come back for the more in depth one, and that that aircraft took some flack over. Um, there were some little FMC quirks people didn't like, and uh, there were some some people perceived frame rate issues. And now looking back at our live stream, I made the mistake of leaving up the uh, frame yeah. frame rate meter. And really mm. what was going on was my CPU bottleneck and OBS. Everything was just chewing up my system. It wasn't the aircraft. And then well, uh, watching the live stream itself, sometimes it would get laggy, but that was the live stream. On our end, it never glitched out right. at all. So um, learned now, a few now did things. You add, did you add the uh, ARAC data in on that file uh, path that I sent you? And did, have you confirmed if that worked? Uh, do no because you couldn't get updated air acts right you couldn't get your sids and stars yet i had no problem with it upon installation right so i'm still going to leave that filed in the uh user error i don't think i did it right and i've been i've been i'm like two months behind on updating my i mean i'm still i still have my subscription to navigraph i've just been very lazy hey, there's a new one out i know new one out by the way it came out uh what two days ago i think 23rd i'll be honest you know the main reason i haven't been downloading it I've been flying because you're not flying so much slant alpha. I'm yeah. I'm on Sky Vector looking for VORs. I'm not really. I'm using my Navigraph for uh, airport charts, but I'm not really um, worried about GPS waypoints and too much of anything yeah. else because I'm trying to get all uh, radio based. Sure, sure. Oh, that uh, that happens. Hey man, I think uh, I think we should probably call this a wrap here, as we're probably at around forty-ish minutes for a first stream. I don't or first uh, quote podcast. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So uh, we may or may not throw some B-roll in here, just so you guys don't have a boring screen of nothing or just an image to stare at. But uh, if you do have any comments at all about any of the topics we've talked about or things you'd like to hear us blabber about. Uh, throw them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We really miss the interaction mm -hmm. we used to get with the live streams. Yeah, and if we get some res uh, good responses, we may go ahead and maybe address some of those in a future podcast. Should it be uh, should it be desired by you guys if it gets used? If it ends up with about three views with about uh, seventeen seconds of quote watch time, we'll probably never do this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I guess we'll wrap it up the way we normally do. So I'll uh, I'll start us off here, Lee, and you can finish okay. it. Okay. So All right, sounds good. we're the Flight Brothers. I'm Tim. And I'm Lee. So remember, plan the flight. And fly the plan. Hope to see you guys again soon.